Yashar, Jasher 12. And when the king heard the words of Avram, he ordered him to be put into prison. And Avram was ten days in prison. And at the end of those days, the king ordered that all the kings, princes, and governors of different provinces and the sages should come before him. And they sat before him, and Avram was still in the house of confinement. And the king said to the princes and sages, Have you heard what Avram, the son of Tarach, has done to his father? Thus has he done to him. And I ordered him to be brought before me. And thus has he spoken. His heart did not misgive him, neither did he stir in my presence. And behold, now he is confined in the prison. And therefore, decide what judgment is due to this man who reviled the king, who spoke and did all the, the things that you heard. And they all answered the king, saying, The man who reviles the king should be hanged upon a tree. But, having done all the things that he said, and having despised our Elohim, he must therefore be burned to death, for this is the law in this matter. If it pleases the king to do this, let him order his servants to kindle a fire both night and day in your brick furnace, and then we will cast this man into it. And the king did so, and he commanded his servants that they should prepare a fire for three days and three nights in the king's furnace that is in Chasdim. And the king ordered them to take Avram from the prison, rather from prison, and bring him out to be burned. And all the king's servants, princes, lords, governors, and judges, and all the inhabitants of the land, about 900,000 men, stood opposite the furnace to see Avram. And all the women and little ones crowded upon the roofs, and towers to see what was doing with Ar Avram. And they all stood together at a distance. And there was not a man left that did not come on that day to behold the scene. And when Avram was come, the conjurers of the king and the sages saw Avram, and they cried out to the king, saying, Our sovereign lord, surely this is the man whom we know to have been the child at whose birth the great star swallowed the four stars which we declared to the king now, 50 years since. And behold, now his father has also transgressed your commands and mocked you 
by bringing you another child, which you did kill. And when the king heard their words, he was exceedingly wroth, and he ordered Tarach to be brought before him. And the king said, Have you heard what the conjurers have spoken? Now tell me truly, how did you? And if you shall speak truth, you shall be acquitted. And seeing that the king's anger was so much kindled, Tarach said to the king, My lord and king, you have heard the truth. And what the sages have spoken is right. And the king said, How could you do this thing to transgress my orders and to give me a child that you did not beget and to take value for him? And Tarach answered the king, Because my tender feelings were excited for my son, at that time, and I took a son of my handmaid, and I brought him to the king. And the king said, Who advised you to this? Tell me, do not hide aught from me, and then you shall not die. And Terach was greatly terrified in the king's presence. And he said to the king, It was Haran, my eldest son, who advised me to this. And Haran was in those days that Avram was born, two and thirty years old. But Haran did not advise his father to anything, for Tarach said this to the king in order to deliver his soul from the king, and he feared greatly. And the king said to Tarach, Haran, your son who advised you to this shall die through with, rather die through fire with Avram. For the sentence of death is upon him, for having rebelled against the king's desire in doing this thing. And Haran at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of Avram, but he kept it within himself. And Haran said in his heart, Behold, now the king has seized Avram on account of these things which Avram did, and it shall come to pass that if Avram prevail over the king, I will follow him. But if the king prevail, I will go after the king. And when Tarach had spoken this to the king concerning Haran, his son, the king ordered Haran to be seized with Avram. And they brought them both, Avram and Haran, his brother, to cast them into the fire. And all the inhabitants of the land and the king's servants and princes, and all the women and little ones were there, standing that day over them. And the king's servants took Avram and his brother, and they stripped them of all their clothes, excepting their lower garments which were upon them, and they bound their hands and feet with linen cords. And the servants of the king lifted them up and cast them both 
into the furnace. And Yahuwah loved Avram, and he had compassion over him. And Yahuwah came down and delivered Avram from the fire. And he was not burned. But all the cords with which they bound him were burned, while Avram remained and walked about in the fire. And Haran died when they had cast him into the fire, and he was burned to ashes. For his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah. And those men who cast him into the fire, the flame of the fire spread over them. And they were burned. And twelve men of them died. And Avram walked in the midst of the fire three days and three nights. And all the servants of the king saw him walking in the fire. And they came and told the king, saying, Behold, we have seen Avram walking about in the midst of the fire. And even the lower garments which are upon him are not burned. But the cord with which he was bound is burned. And when the king heard their words, his heart fainted, and he would not believe them. So he sent other faithful princes to see this matter, and they went and saw it and told it to the king, and the king rose to go and see it. And he saw Avram walking to and fro in the midst of the fire, and he saw Haran's body burned, and the king wondered greatly. And the king ordered Avram to be taken out from the fire, and his servants approached to take him out, and they could not, for the fire was round about, and the flame ascended toward them from the furnace, and the king's servants fled from it. And the king rebuked them, saying, Make haste and bring Avram out of the fire, that you shall not die. And the servants of the king again approached to bring Avram out. And the flames came upon them and burned their faces, so that eight of them died. And when the king saw that his servants could not approach the fire, lest they should be burned, the king called to Avram, O servant of the Elohim, who is in heaven, go forth from amidst the fire and come hither before me. And Avram hearkened to the voice of the king, and he went forth from the fire, and came and stood before the king. And when Avram came out, the king and all his servants saw Avram coming before the king, with his lower garments upon him, for they were not burned, but the cord with which he was bound was burned. And the king said to Avram, How is it that you were not burned in the fire? And Avram said to the king, The Elohim of heaven and earth, in whom I trust, and who has all in his power, he 
delivered me from the fire into which you did cast me. And Haran, the brother of Avram, was burned to ashes, and they sought for his body, and they found it consumed. And Haran was 82 years old when he died in the fire of Kashdim. And the king, princes, and inhabitants of the land, seeing that Avram was delivered from the fire, they came and bowed down to Avram. And Avram said to them, Do not bow down to me, but bow down to the Elohim of the world who made you and serve him and go in his ways for it is he who delivered me from out of this fire and it is he who created the souls and ruachot of all men and formed man in his mother's womb and brought him forth into the world. And it is he who will deliver those who trust in him from all pain. And this thing seemed very wonderful in the eyes of the king and princes, that Avram was saved from the fire and that Haran was burned. And the king gave Avram many presents and he gave him his two head servants from the king's house. The name of one was Oni, and the name of the other was Eli Erzer. And all the kings, princes, and servants gave Avram many gifts of silver and gold and pearl. And the king and his princes sent him away. And he went in peace. And Avram went forth from the king in peace, and many of the king's servants followed him. And about three hundred men joined him. And Avram returned on that day and went to his father's house, he and the men that followed him. And Avram served Yahuwah, Eloheyu, all the days of his life. And he walked in his ways and followed his Torah. And from that day forward, Avram inclined the hearts of the sons of men to serve Yahuwah. And at that time, Nehor and Avram took unto themselves women, the daughters of their brother Haran. The woman of Nehor was Milka, and the name of Avram's woman was Sarai. And Sarai, the woman of Avram, was barren. She had no offspring in those days. And at the expiration of 
two years from Avram's going out of the fire. That is in the 52nd year of his life. Behold, King Nimrod sat in Babel upon his throne, rather, upon the throne, and the king fell asleep and dreamed that he was standing with his troops and hosts in a valley opposite the king's furnace. And he lifted up his eyes and saw a man in the likeness of Avram coming forth from the furnace and that he came and stood before the king with his drawn sword and then sprang to the king with his sword when the king fled from the man for he was afraid. And while he was running, the man threw an egg upon the king's head. And the egg became a great river. And the king dreamed that all his troops sank in that river and died. And the king took flight with three men who were before him and he escaped. And the king looked at these men and they were clothed in princely dresses as the garments of kings and had the appearance and majesty of kings. And while they were running, the river again turned to an egg before the king. And there came forth from the egg a young bird which came before the king and flew at his head and plucked out the king's eye. And the king was grieved at the sight and he awoke out of his sleep and his ruach was agitated and he felt a great terror. And in the morning, the king rose from his couch in fear, and he ordered all the wise men and magicians to come before him when the king related his dream to them. And a wise servant of the king, whose name was Anaku, answered the king, saying, This is nothing else but the evil of Avram and his seed, which will spring up against my lord and king in the latter days. And behold, the day will come when Avram and his seed and the children of his household will war with my king and they will smite all the king's hosts and his troops. And as to what you have said concerning three men which you did see like unto yourself and which did escape, this means that 
only you will escape with three kings from the kings of the earth who will be with you in battle. And that which you saw of the river which turned to an egg as at first and the young bird plucking out your eye. This means nothing else but the seed of Avram, which will slay the king in latter days. This is my king's dream, and this is its interpretation. And the dream is true. And the interpretation which your servant has given you is right. Now, therefore, my king, surely you know that it is now 52 years since your sages saw this at the birth of Avram. And if my king will suffer Avram to live in the earth, it will be to the injury of my lord and king. For all the days that Avram lives, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. For this was known formerly at his birth. And why will not my king slay him, that his evil may be kept from you in latter days? And Nimrod hearkened to the voice of Anaku, and he sent some of his servants in secret to go and seize Avram and bring him before the king to suffer death. And Eliezer, Avram's servant, whom the king had given him, was at that time in the presence of the king, and he heard what Anaku had advised the king, and what the king had said to cause Avram's death. And Eliezer said to Avram, Hasten, rise up, and save your soul, that you may not die through the hands of the king. For thus did he see in a dream concerning you, and thus did Aniku interpret it. And thus also did Aniku advise the king concerning you. And Avram hearkened to the voice of Eliezer and Avram hastened and ran for safety to the house of Noah and his son Shem. And he concealed himself there and found a place of safety. And the king's servants came to Avram's house to seek him, but they could not find him. And they searched throughout the country, and he was not to be found. And they went and searched in every direction, and he was not to be met with. And when the king's servants 
could not find Avram, they returned to the king. But the king's anger against Avram was stilled as they did not find him. And the king drove from his mind this matter concerning Avram. And Avram was concealed in Noah's house for one month until the king had forgotten this matter. But Avram was still afraid of the king and Terach came to see Avram, his son, secretly in the house of Noah. And Terach was very great in the eyes of the king. And Avram said to his father, Do you not know that the king thinks to slay me and to annihilate my name from the earth by the advice of his wicked counselors? Now, whom have you here, and what have you in this land? Arise, let us go together to the land of Canaan, that we may be delivered from his hand, lest you perish also through him in the latter days. Do you not know, or have you not heard, that it is not through love that Nimrod gives you all this honor, but it is only for his benefit that he bestows all this good upon you? And... If he do unto you greater good than this, surely these are only vanities of the world, for wealth and riches cannot avail in the day of wrath and anger. Now, therefore, hearken to my voice and let us arise and go to the land of Canaan out of the reach of injury from Nimrod and serve Yahuwah who created you in the earth and it will be well with you. And cast away all the vain things which you pursue. And Avram ceased to speak when Noah and his son Shem answered Terach, saying, True is the word which Avram has said unto you. And Terach hearkened to the voice of his son Avram, and Terach did all that Avram said. For this was from Yahuwah, that the king should not cause Avram's death. 